At their annual conference this year, the Black Management Forum held discussions around the theme, Can Good Governance Increase Trust Amongst Government, Civil Society, Labor and Business? Dumisha Makhaniele reports on the critical outcomes from these sessions. Let's take a look. Academics, captains of industry and regional leaders engaged in a discussion that aimed to tackle the mammoth task of corporate governance in Africa. This included taking a look at the continent's current situation, dissecting the challenges, progress made and charting a way forward that will ultimately lead to sustainable growth for Africa. Sami Onyango, CEO of East and Central Africa for Deloitte, shares his view on what defines corporate governance. Uh, corporate governance is those checks and balances that prevent uh, the, the, the management of corporations from um, you know, sort of uh, uh, excesses and from the public sector, the governments, from also ignoring their mandate to the people. So if you have those checks and balances, it keeps you on a straight and narrow that I have to achieve these objectives. So again, if you look at the, the corporations, uh, which is the private sector, the objectives of those corporations, you know, foremost, is actually to make money for their investors, which are the shareholders. But you also have to remember that they also have responsibility for the employees that work for them. Uh, in addition, they have responsibility for the community that they work and they operate in and the environment in which they operate. And one can actually extend that one further and say, other than the community, you also have a responsibility to the state. You have to obey the laws that the state has actually set. So you, you can actually say, if I'm looking at the corporate governance, it is to make me be able to achieve those objectives at the private sector level. When you come to the public sector level, uh, governance is all about the, 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 the government in power delivering on the mandate that it in a sort of promises people. According to the president and CEO of the world's largest public relations company, Richard Alderman, less than one-fifth of the general public believes business leaders and government officials will tell the truth when confronted with a difficult issue. And now there's also a growing trust gap between institutions and their leaders globally. I think one of the key issues is certainly the interplay between business and government. Um, this is not just something that is pertinent for us here in South Africa, but certainly across the continent. Looking to strengthen the quality, the frequency, the level of debate and engagement between business and government to try and drive economic growth and development forward. So is there the vision around what a country is looking to achieve and how does that get executed through management, whether it's public or private sector, the role of leadership and management and how that contributes to overall development of any economy is governance does not equate to leadership. Um, you know, governance is an important part of it, but there are other aspects of it. That governance is, is a necessary but not a sufficient condition for economic growth and development. Developing countries see foreign direct investment as one of the most important factors for bolstering economic growth and development. FDI is not only a great source of foreign capital for these countries, but it also provides them access to new technologies, knowledge and international markets. One of the most significant questions in international business has been why some countries are getting more FDI than others. There are a number of theories and paradigms which can be used to answer this question, but it is widely accepted that good corporate governance is crucial for developing countries who want to improve the performance of firms through inward FDI. What is now more critical is the rule of law. So you have your in a sort of executive, which is the government, you have the judiciary, and then you have the legislature which is the parliament. The more critical one is the judiciary. How transparent is the judiciary? How quickly do they make decisions? Uh, if I'm a, an investor and I come into a country, I want to make sure that I'm able to set up yeah, 
as quickly as possible. And not that I'm being held back because somebody wants a 10% or a 20% shareholding in the company before they come in. So it's about really linking good corporate governance with effectiveness. Because good corporate governance is about leadership. It's also about the type of culture that we are imbuing our people. If we say that culture is a culture that says it's okay to steal from the poorest of the poor, then I think we need to have some very critical conversations as a people with great natural endowments because there can't clearly be good corporate governance. But also in the private sector, if we had good corporate governance, we shouldn't be talking about the bread cartels, we shouldn't be talking about the construction scandals that we've just had, where there's a little bit of collusion, price fixing and market allocation. And in the public sector, when there is good corporate governance, then we do not talk about this wastefulness. There's no question about Africa's investment potential. And as local and global companies continue to expand and cement their reach on the continent, it is for the responsibility of all stakeholders involved that investor interest and sustained economic growth is achieved through good corporate governance.